<laughs> Captain Terry Lovell. The staff of Stonyhurst College. And Corporal Brown and Corporal Forshaw, DLOY cooks, working together with the college catering staff. The boys gather up every scrap of litter, and already old comrades begin to arrive. Clem Hartley, a former WO2. A cheerful crowd of individuals, soon to become anonymous in uniforms, so carefully prepared. Service dress. Blues. And in the background there, the scarlet and gold of full dress. their horses. The horses for the mounted escort for the sovereign are provided by the Household Cavalry Training School. Salad luncheon. For the lads, naffy break. <laughs> the last bread roll is in place. The cooks and the waitresses look at a job well done heave a sigh of relief and take their places to watch the parade. For the regiment, it's all to do. This is the moment of truth. Private Dowson, calmly confident. She's an Australian and one of the Women's Royal Army Corps rearguard in Land Rovers, commanded by Captain Alison Hale. Forward of them, four corporals, markers for the four guards formed by the squadron of the regiment. In the background, the imposing facade of Stonyhurst College. Presented to the Jesuit fathers, by Thomas Weld, a former pupil, in 1794. Today, his counterparts await the unfolding of an historic event, rejoicing, as Thomas himself would surely have done, in a day free of lessons. It was just four years after that gift, in 1798, that the Bolton Light Horse Volunteers were formed under the command of Colonel Fletcher. This was the first of several independent troops of light horse, which together became, in 1834, the Duke of Lancaster's own yeomanry cavalry. And now, their counterparts march on parade. Bandmaster W.O. 1 Barnwell leads the regimental band of the 1st Battalion, the Queen's Lancashire Regiment. The march, Trumpet Major. <laughs> Leading the regiment, the adjutant, Captain Sean Seawright, 1420th King's Hussars, followed by D Squadron from Blackpool and Preston, who form number four guard. <laughs> Guard number two is B Squadron from Clifton, Manchester. And guard number one is formed by A Squadron from Wigan.
Morning. Press forward. Regiment is dressed by Squadron Sergeant Major Jones. For 10 years, he's been the Sergeant Major of the Ceremonial Guard, the only such guard in the Territorial Army. Move right. Steady. After the 1992 Cavalry Memorial Parade, he will retire after 20 years' service. Real right. Steady. There we see him. Months of training, hours of rehearsal, and all leading up to the next 60 minutes. Each one is aware of that great military truth. It all depends on me. Now the officers march on and take post. This was addressed by the second in command of the regiment, Major John Eastham, who now hands over the parade to Colonel Martin Steiger. Major Eastham is one of several who hold the territorial decoration for his many years' service. He's moving now to take up his position on the right flank, whereupon the colonel will order the guidon, the one that is to be retired today, to be marched on. The second from the left there is the Reverend Trevor Vaughan, the regimental padre. RSM Morrow, RSM of the 1420th King's Hussars, and today also of the DLOY, commands the Guidon party as it moves to take up position in the centre of the regiment. <laughs> QMS Gilmore in the Skill and Dragoon Guards and escorted by SQMS Jackson and Kershaw. First of the VIPs to arrive, Commander 42 Brigade, Brigadier Ian McLeod of the Parachute Regiment. Lance Corporal Fairhurst in the 1830s pattern full dress uniform of the regiment in their role as light dragoons. And the next to arrive will be Major General Crowfoot, GOC Northwest District. Escorted to his place by Major John Tustin. <laughs> and now we await the arrival of the Honorary Colonel, Major General Sir Michael Palmer. He's a former adjutant of the regiment whose father, Colonel Bobby Palmer, actually commanded it during the war. And here he is. 
Lieutenant Colonel Frank Hewitt leads Sergeant Valentine and Corporals Young and Gaskell. They've been training hard to become the mounted escort to the Sovereign. frequently has a mounted escort, but not since the Second World War has it been provided by a territorial regiment. With Her Majesty Colonel Simon Townley, the Lord Lieutenant, and a former honorary colonel of the regiment. And now the present honorary colonel escorts the colonel in chief up the steps of the dais to turn and receive the royal salute. The Duke of Lancaster's own yeomanry! Royal salute! Present! On! Push this guy. Right there, the Queen's orderly, Lance Corporal Pugh. He and the other orderly, Lance Corporal Bond, are both local sergeants for the day. Colonel comes forward to invite the Queen to inspect her regiment. And as she leaves the dais, you'll see that her orderlies move forward to escort her. Immediately behind comes Her Majesty's equerry, uh, Colonel Blair Stuart Wilson of the Scots Guards. <coughs> Ask the distinguished visitors, guests, and as she turns, we can see upon the Queen's collar the Duke of Lancaster's own yeomanry badge as a brooch formed of diamonds, rubies and emeralds. 
and set in silver and gold, a gift from the regiment. And so to the inspection. Number one guard, commanded by Major Alistair Mackenzie, formerly with New Zealand Special Forces. Same in command is Captain Mike Hale, also Lieutenant Paul Whittingham. Major David Lithgow Smith commands number two guard. Tim, second lieutenant Philip Houghton, and Captain Richard Coss. As the party passes the guidon, they acknowledge it. Number three guard is under the command of Major George Fulton, with Captain Tom Bowring to IC and Captain Ernest Ryder. And on to number four guard, under Major Tony Berry. The special headdress is worn by Lieutenant Henry Fijilek of the Royal Australian Armoured Corps. He's on attachment, and this is his last parade with the regiment, as it is for Second Lieutenant the Honourable Rafe Asherton, who's leaving to join the lifeguards. As Her Majesty comes down the rear rank, we see a close-up, not only of the Duchy Rose on the collar, but also of the chain mail worn with service dress, a privilege bestowed on a recognition of their service in the Palestine campaign in the First World War, and now worn by the whole regiment. Slow March, Royal Standard. escort to the Guidon, has detached itself and now advances to the march Holyrood. Watch closely as they perform a manoeuvre difficult enough on a firm parade ground, but especially so on this saturated turf. Let's go, Keegan! General Salute! We can! Oh. 
the regiment prepares to say goodbye to the old Guidon. Golden Spurs sets the rather sad mood as the Guidon approaches the ranks, there to be paraded and saluted for the last time. Regimental salute! Let's go! Guidon! Let's go! Let's go! The escort to the Guidon has marched through the ranks to resume its position and its role as number one guard. Escort to the Guidon! Oh! Escort to the Guidon! Well, I advance! Left! Turn! General salute! Present! Come! March off the Guidon! Sir! Guidon party! By the centre! Slow! March! <laughs> RSM Morrow has command of the Guidon party as it marches off to Auld Lang Syne. As it passes the Sovereign, RQMS Gilmore prepares to lower it in salute. changes. Captain Terry Rennick and RQMS John Cavanna march briskly forward.
to where the clergy are assembled by the drums, and the deputy chaplain general will conduct the service of consecration. As the cover is withdrawn, the drums, the altar for the service, are guarded by Sergeant Major Norman Turner. We resume our coverage after the service is over, and as the Queen, as Duke of Lancaster and Colonel-in-Chief, formally presents the new guidon to the regiment before addressing them. father in 1909 was a symbol of sacrifice and honor 
in war and peace to two generations of yeomen, so the guidon presented by your majesty in 1961 has been our focus of loyalty and service for the last three decades. We shall treasure this, our new guidon, not only to keep faith with the traditions and glory of the past, but also to inspire in the next generation of yeomen our unfaltering devotion to Your Majesty as Duke of Lancaster and Colonel-in-Chief. The Duke of Lancaster's own yeomanry will advance in review order by the centre. Quick march! <laughs> What is it about this regiment? Today, we've been able to read some of its story in the battle honours emblazoned upon the guidon, in the medals and the decorations of the old comrades, and in the bearing of the regiment on parade. But the truth lies invisible, experienced, not seen. Comradeship, confidence, and pride. Colonel John Cardwell commands the old comrades. in service dress. He was the RSM of the 1961 Guidon Parade. Major Eddie Sheen.
Majesty leaves the dais with General Palmer and the Lord Lieutenant to make her way across the grass to where her hosts wait to welcome her formally to Stonyhurst College. General Palmer will present, first of all, the rector, Father O'Halloran. Then the headmaster, Dr. and Mrs. Mercer. The bursar, Mr. and Mrs. Musket and Mr. Usher, the deputy head. So you made a wonderful setting. the route across the main court as the party make their way into the school for a reception and for luncheon. And we rejoin Her Majesty now after luncheon as she visits the Arundel Library. The rector is showing her relics of Sir Thomas More. As Lord Chancellor, under Henry VIII, he refused to recognize him as head of the church and was executed. Father O'Halloran shows her the crucifix he wore about his neck. The next gift will be presented to the Queen by the head boy, Michael Tollinar. Majesty, um, on behalf of everyone in the college, may I present this gift to you on the commemoration of your visit. The gift well. is a length of MacDonald tartan of the 18th century pattern. Flora MacDonald lent Bonnie Prince Charlie her cloak to disguise himself as he fled. He returned it, but kept a small fragment, and that fragment came into the possession of the Jesuit fathers. Recently, it was sent to the Scottish Tartan Society for testing. They pronounced it genuine. And after researching the original colours, two lengths were specially woven. One for the college, the other for the Queen. Now she signs the visitor's book, watched by the six-year-old Charles Edward Stuart when he was still a bonny, Prince Charlie. <laughs> the mood is genial, but security is ever vigilant. Thank <laughs> you. 
Usher, Mr. and Mrs. Muscat, the headmaster, and the rector escort their guest back to the main court for the official photograph. So with cheers and applause, it's time for thanks and farewells. regiment for one last appointment. Their official photograph. To hang in the place of honour alongside the one taken at Bellevue, Manchester, when today's old guidon was presented 29 years ago. Well done. Well done. <laughs> 